Hello viewers, last time uh, we stated the uh, important theorem of complex analysis almost the theorem in complex analysis namely the Cauchy's theorem and uh, this in this session we are going to prove uh, the Cauchy's theorem. So, uh, let me give the statement of the theorem once again Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, the Cauchy's theorem says that uh, for a rectangle, okay, so this is one version of Cauchy's theorem, it says that let R be a rectangle or rectangular region R equals set of all x plus i y such that x is in between a and b and uh, y is in between c and d okay. uh, and we will assume that a is not equal to b and c is not equal to d uh, for uh, non triviality okay so it's really a rectangular region with some area okay and let um, f be analytic on an open set containing this rectangular region R, okay. then uh, the conclusion is that then the contour integration of um, f of z dz on the boundary of the rectangle R okay, oriented in the uh, positive sense is equal to 0. Okay. And once we prove this theorem, um, it does not matter how you orient the boundary of the rectangle because uh, once it's zero, uh, then the uh, then uh, the rectangle uh, boundary oriented in the opposite direction uh, will also give you a contour integral equal to zero. Okay, uh, so so the orientation really doesn't matter after we prove the theorem. Okay, so uh, and and hence. Uh, this notation is being casual about uh, the orientation. Okay. So, uh, so for to here is the proof of the theorem. Okay. So, let us uh, start with a notation. Okay. So, here is a notation just to avoid uh, writing too much. Uh, let me let me give you a notation uh, eta of some t, t is a rectangle let us say okay, is essentially uh, the contour integral along the boundary of t f of z dz for any rectangular region t. Okay, so, that is the notation I will use. Okay. So, uh, let us start with uh, a picture. So, here is the rectangular region R. Oops. Okay. And let us subdivide this rectangle into four equal pieces. Okay. So, in terms of uh, area let us say. Okay. So, here is the contour uh, del r okay, which appears here in the contour integral in the statement of the theorem. Okay. So, so, like I mentioned last time what we do is uh, we take these contours okay, the rectangle r the rectangular region r is divided into four uh, rectangular regions okay, and then we take these uh, contours. Okay. So, this is just a picture um, what these four contours actually are, are they traverse the sides of the rectangle okay, and those inside lines. Okay. So, just for lack of space I am uh, drawing a smaller slightly smaller rectangle inside to indicate uh, you know that the contour is going on the rectangle and on the subdivisions the lines which are a part of the subdivision. Okay. So, for example, um, 
here is a contour like this okay which actually should have been this contour which is wiggly right now okay so uh, instead of draw, drawing such wiggly things i just draw drew them inside okay so um, r is now union of four rectangular regions r 1 okay union r 2 union r 3 union r 4 okay so i am naming them r superscript parentheses 1 2 3 4 etc okay and so um, okay and since the inside uh, lines you can see that uh, when you consider the boundary of these r 1 r 2 r 3 r 4 you see that the inside lines have um, contour integration of f uh, in one direction and then in the opposite direction okay so for example this line li right here okay has a contour integration along this and along this okay uh, so they cancel each other okay so what i mean uh, is that when you consider the contour integral of f of z dz on do r okay then uh, on del r this is equal to the contour integral on del r 1 of f of z dz plus the contour integral on del r 2 f of z dz i apologize i am taking r 1 on top r 2 like that okay del r 3 like that f of z dz plus integral do r 4 f of z dz okay and since uh, like i mentioned uh, the contour integral on the insides cancel due to opposite directions all we are left with is contour integral along uh, the boundary of r okay so it's easy to see why this equality is true from the above picture okay and uh, from our notation we had uh, up there eta of r is eta of r 1 like that plus eta of r 2 plus eta of r 3 plus eta of r 4. Okay. So, uh, we can conclude that uh, there is some i okay, 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to 4. Okay. So, essentially one of these is at least uh, one fourth of uh, eta of r in terms of absolute value. Okay. So, there is some i uh, such that the modulus of eta of r i okay, is greater than or equal to one fourth of modulus of eta of r. Okay, that's clear because if the moduli of any one of these uh, uh, is strictly less than one fourth of uh, the modulus of eta of r, then you get a, a contradiction from um, a triangle inequality. Let's say, okay, so um, so there should be one i uh, such that uh, this should hold. Okay. So, uh, that we will preserve. Okay. So, we will preserve this inequality. Okay. So, call or let us call this r i as r 1. Okay. So, now I am saying that that particular r i for which the above holds, uh, we will call that rectangle r 1. Now, there could be more than one rectangle for which this holds. Uh, among r 1, r 2, r 3, r 4, uh, there could be more than one uh, for which this holds, then in that case you just choose one of them, you can randomly pick one of them okay, and uh, call that as r 1. Okay. So, in case there is more than one i with Okay, so let me call this inequality one. Okay, with uh, okay for for which 
one holds then choose one of them arbitrarily it does not matter as r1 okay so uh, we will call that r1 and then let us suppose let us pretend that the top left rectangle was r1 okay so let me go back to this picture let us pretend that uh, that there uh, is r1 okay so in that event um, you take r1 and do the same divide it into four equal pieces okay and continue uh, the process okay so uh, divide r1 okay into four equal rectangles by equal i mean equal uh, in terms of area let us say okay so uh, okay and and call these r11 r12 r13 and r14 okay and once again uh, there exists for the same uh, triangle inequality reasons okay there exists an i 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to 4 such that the modulus of eta of r1 i okay is at least 1/4 of the modulus of eta of r1 this time okay and r1 was chosen so that its modulus uh, was greater than or equal to 1/4 of the modulus of r modulus of eta of r rather so this is greater than or equal to 1/4 times 1/4 of uh, modulus of eta of r okay so call this Uh, r1 i as r2 okay so once again in case there is uh, in case of more than one such i okay etc etc do the same you just pick one arbitrarily okay and then you have r1 uh, r2 uh, okay which is produced like that okay and continue this process okay so continue this process to obtain uh, a sequence of rectangles r1 r2 etc okay so r1 of course it contains r2 and initially r1 was contained in r okay and then r2 contains r3 etc okay so continue this process now uh, so we get this nested sequence of rectangles and uh, rectangular regions rather okay and uh, what's nice ab nice about this is that um, we have an estimate that uh, eta of rn of the next rectangle okay is at least 4 power minus n times the modulus of eta of r right so for example uh, here here you observe that eta of r2 we are going to call this r2 so eta of r2 uh, in modulus is greater than or equal to 4 power minus 2 modulus of eta of r okay so continuing this uh, you get Uh, eta of r n is at least 4 power minus n uh, in modulus uh, of eta of r okay and then uh, so we will preserve this uh, inequality okay we'll call this let us say 2 uh, okay now uh, then these are, these are nested sequence of Uh, rectangular regions okay r1 r2 etc so uh, from uh, a theorem in topology we know that uh, the intersection of these is non empty okay and these rectangles are shrinking in area each one is 1/4 of the previous one 
okay. So, uh, they converge to uh, a certain point uh, because the intersection their intersection is non empty ok. So, uh, we, we will say that ok. So, these rectangles converge to a point z star ok. Uh, same that star of course, that that is uh, inside the rectangular region r ok and then um, it is in the following sense ok. So, given a delta positive ok, there is a natural number uh, capital N such that uh, R capital N is contained in set of all z such that the modulus of z minus z star uh, is strictly less than delta. Okay. So, if you consider z star which is the point of convergence of these rectangles and you consider a delta ball around it ok. So, this is a ball of radius delta ok. Then uh, there is a natural number n such that the nth rectangle is contained in this ball ok this r, r capital n ok. And once r n is contained in there you know that um, r n plus 1 is which which is contained in r n is also contained in there ok. So, i e so notice uh, r n is contained in uh, z such that mod z minus z star is strictly less than delta for all n greater than or equal to capital N right, because uh, these are nested sequence of uh, rectangles ok. So, if r capital N is in there all further rectangles are in there. So, uh, so now in uh, the convergence of these rectangles to the point z star is in this sense is in this particular sense ok. So, now we are free to choose a delta and given any delta positive uh, we know that there is going to be some rectangle and uh, such that all the rectangles uh, from there on uh, will be uh, in, in the Tabor sequence will be in this delta ball ok. So, now we are going to choose a, uh, this delta in a certain way ok. So, here is uh, the way we choose delta. So, we know that given uh, we know that f is analytic uh, in an open set containing uh, the rectangle capital R ok. So, uh, given epsilon greater than 0 uh, there is a delta positive such that ok whenever The, the modulus of z minus z star is strictly less than delta the modulus of f of z minus f of z star ok minus f prime of z star times z minus z star ok uh, is strictly less than epsilon times modulus of z minus z star ok. That is because uh, this function f is analytic at z star ok. We use the uh, definition of uh, analyticity or uh, differentiability at z star. So, so whenever uh, so given epsilon greater than uh, 0 there is a delta greater than 0 such that whenever these z's are in a uh, delta neighborhood of uh, z star uh, this inequality holds ok. So, this we will call this as uh, inequality 3 right. This is I mean 3 is clear from definition of uh, uh, differentiability f of z minus f of z star ok, um, okay divided by z minus z star the limit of this as z approaches z star ok is equal to f prime of z z star rather. 
Okay, so from this uh, we get this inequality. Okay, so um, or or this this uh, limit means the above inequality. Okay, so now uh, so now let uh, let epsilon greater than zero be given. Okay, then choose. So, now this is a fresh epsilon we start with let epsilon greater than 0 be given okay. choose uh, choose delta positive such that uh, 3 holds okay. and uh, given okay, and, uh, and after choosing this delta Okay, uh, obtain an n, okay, a natural number n such that uh, this here holds, such that R n is contained in uh, set of all z such that mod z minus z star is strictly less than delta. Okay, we saw that given any positive delta, this can be done. So, um, so now after choosing this delta, we can uh, we can get such a containment. Okay, we can get, get such a natural number. We will make some observation uh, by the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, the complex uh, version. Okay, so by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the uh, integration, okay, the contour integration uh, of one, the complex function one dz on the boundary of R n, okay, is zero because one is the derivative of z on all of the complex plane. So in particular, uh, on an open set containing uh, this rectangle R n, okay. And likewise, uh, the contour integration of the function z dz, okay, uh, on the boundary of R n, okay, is also zero. Okay, so we will need these two pieces uh, uh, from uh, which are conclusions from the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, uh, of course, the second equality here or the second uh, value of the integral follows from the fact that z is the derivative of the function. Uh, z squared by 2 on all of the complex plane okay so uh, so we can we will use these two okay and uh, notice that uh, the modulus of the contour integral uh, on the boundary of rn okay uh, i haven't chosen what n is here but let's say boundary of rn of f of z minus f of z star minus f prime of z star times z minus z star dz okay so all this dz okay is less than or equal to the modulus of the integration the contour integration on the boundary of rn of epsilon times z minus z star dz okay and this inequality is right from uh, here 3. Okay, I am using 3 uh, and, um, and, and then I can conclude uh, this thing here. Okay, so, uh, what I get is, so, what I get is uh, this is the integration, the contour integration of f of z dz minus the contour integration on the boundary of R n okay, uh, f of z star dz minus the contour integration of f prime of z star times z dz okay, uh, plus the contour integration of f prime of z star times z star times the contour integration of 1 dz. So, that is in the that is in the left hand side of this inequality okay. and um, 
yeah uh, so you notice that f prime i mean i am writing this way because f prime of z star is a constant and z star is a constant okay so you notice that uh, let me pick a different color maybe this one okay so this one and this one and this one all these three are zero because the contour integration of one or z okay on the contour uh, boundary of rn are zero okay so um, this is less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to uh, epsilon times the contour integration on rn okay of the absolute or, or modulus of z minus z star uh, times mod dz okay so uh, these are zeros these yellow things are zeros so what i get is that the modulus of the contour integration of f of z dz on rn okay is less than or equal to epsilon times now i am going to use the estimation theorem we saw in the last session okay and say that uh, the modulus of z minus z star okay uh, on in rn okay is at most uh, is at most uh, the length of the diagonal right so here is the picture so if you look at z star okay and here is rn containing z star z star could be anywhere in rn okay so uh, the maximum value of the modulus of z minus z star as z varies on the boundary of this rn is essentially uh, you know the length of the diagonal because z star for example uh, could be uh, a point on this diagonal itself one of the corners okay then this is the if this is the point z then uh, z is uh, the diagonal length away from uh, z star okay so that's the maximum distance so this is less than or equal to uh, z minus z star is at most uh, dn where dn equals the length of diagonal of uh, rn okay so this is dn okay and then i am left with the integration of mod dz on boundary of rn and we know that that's the length of the uh, boundary of rn okay which is essentially the perimeter okay so let me write that as ln okay so ln equals the perimeter of the rectangular region okay and the way we have chosen these rectangles by subdividing them into uh, four pieces of equal area uh, we have the following the this dn okay will be 2 power minus n times d where d equals length of the diagonal of r okay and ln which is the perimeter of the nth rectangle okay is uh, going to be 2 power minus n times l okay where l equals perimeter of r perimeter of r okay so um, what we get is the modulus of eta of rn is less than or equal to uh, epsilon times uh, dn times epsilon times dn times ln which is 2 power minus n times d times 2 power minus n times l which is 4 power minus n times d times l 
So, this we will call as inequality 4. Okay, maybe I use 3, so I am going to call this 4. Yeah, okay, 4. Okay, so, from 1 and 4, I will uh, allow me to go back to 1. I'll remind you what 1 is or maybe 2 actually. Okay, so, 2 tells us that the modulus of eta of R n is at least so much. Okay, and 4 tells us that the modulus of eta of R n is at most so much. Okay. So, we can compare these two quantities okay. from 2 and 4, we conclude that the modulus of uh, eta of R n. Okay. So, uh, 4 power minus n modulus of eta of R is less than or equal to uh, modulus of eta of R n okay. and then from 4 this is epsilon times 4 power minus n times d l. Okay. So, uh, we will ignore the, uh, the middle part namely the modulus of eta of R n and conclude that the modulus of eta of R which we are interested in is less than or equal to epsilon times d l. Okay. So, this tells us that um, well okay. So, this tells us that uh, since epsilon is arbitrary okay, uh, that eta modulus of eta of r is actually equal to 0 d and l are fixed constants we have uh, started with a rectangular region. Okay. So, uh, the modulus of eta of r has to be 0, okay, which implies eta of r itself. So, this proves the Cauchy's theorem okay. and uh, so let us uh, before proceeding uh, further, let us see the interpretation or one physical interpretation of Cauchy's theorem. So, uh, there is a uh, I am going to give the fluid mechanics uh, interpretation uh, of what Cauchy's theorem is telling us. Uh, there is an equivalent uh, version for electricity one can uh, or for electric fields that one can uh, construct, but nevertheless here is a, a physical okay, a physical interpretation. Okay, of uh, Cauchy's theorem. So, um, few sessions earlier, we saw that uh, when one considers a two dimensional flows, fluid flows, uh, then one can model it using uh, complex analysis. Okay, and then the uh, velocity function at each point is the conjugate of an analytic function. Uh, if we assume that the fluid flow is uh, irrotational and does not have sources or sinks. Okay. So, uh, irrotational just means that the fluid is not uh, just rotating around a point roughly speaking okay. and then uh, it is not stagnant anywhere. Okay. And likewise, a uh, source or a sink tells us that there is no fluid produced anywhere uh, during the flow okay. or there is no fluid which is uh, which disappears, no volume of fluid which disappears uh, during a flow. Okay. So, if we make these uh, assumptions, uh, then uh, we get that the velocity uh, field okay, uh, of a fluid flow is the conjugate of an analytic function. Okay. So, uh, let us first uh, start by interpreting what the line integral means in this context. Okay. So, let uh, so let me draw a picture first. So, here is a, a certain conduit okay, a, a deep channel perhaps okay. and then we can assume that uh, assume that if we consider uh, parallel strips uh, along this conduit anywhere, then uh, the flow is two dimensional. Okay. So, here is 
a point x y let us say let us model it as x y then there is a certain velocity vector based at that point okay, and then there, there are points everywhere and at each point there is a certain uh, velocity to the fluid okay and uh, v of x y okay uh, denote the uh, the velocity of the fluid at a point x comma y okay and we write v of x y is p of x y plus i times q of x y okay where p indicates the uh, the fluid velocity parallel to the x axis okay so we we will have some imaginary or we will imagine some axis here okay this is an x axis the y axis etc okay in that conduit and then um, and then we have uh, p is the velocity along x axis and q is the velocity along uh, y axis okay then v of xy is a conjugate of well let me write that as z okay where f is analytic okay provided that the fluid flow is irrotational okay that is to say that the curl of the velocity field is zero okay and um, does not have sources or sinks the fluid flow does not have sources or sink sources or sinks says that the divergence of this field is zero of v is zero okay and these two we saw these two conditions actually allow us to uh, uh, form the uh, cauchy riemann equations okay uh, uh, they allow us to conclude that the cauchy riemann equations hold okay for uh, the function uh, v bar okay which is f so um, with these conditions uh, we have v is a conjugate of an analytic function okay now uh, we will first start by interpreting a line integral. So, let us for simplicity assume that gamma is a certain uh, certain uh, arc like that okay, it is a curve. Uh, so, uh, in terms of what we have been describing uh, gamma is uh, what I have drawn here is the trace of a gamma of a certain gamma which is a parameterized curve uh, and so. Um, and remember that the interpretation of line integral is independent of how we actually uh, parameterize the curve itself. Okay. So, I will just call this piece of string, okay, this piece of uh, curve here as, uh, as a contour gamma okay. and I am keeping it simple, I am not uh, allowing it to self intersect or anything. Okay. So, here is a simple piece and um, let us now assume f of z is well f of z is p of x y minus i times q of x y from above because v is p plus i q okay. and so the contour integral of f of z dz along this kind of smooth uh, curve okay, is the integration from a to b where um, gamma is parameterized uh, from a to b okay, to c. Uh, of f of gamma of t gamma prime of t dt okay so if i call gamma of t as x of t plus i times y of t okay so gamma after all has its image in c okay then uh, i can write this line integral as a to b f is p of Okay, uh, gamma of t, gamma of t is a point in the complex plane. Okay, so uh, strictly I should be writing x of t comma y of t. So 
p of x of t comma y of t okay uh, plus or rather minus i times q time q of x of t comma y of t okay and then gamma prime so times gamma prime gamma prime is x prime of t plus i times y prime of t dt okay so uh, i will write this as for simplicity i'll ignore uh, i'll uh, i'll drop writing x of t y of t etc i'll simply write this as p minus i q times x prime plus i y prime okay since what each one is a function of is clear from the context okay so this is that so now let me multiply these two so a to b p x prime uh, plus q y prime plus i times p y prime minus q x prime and then d t all this d t ok. So, we can uh, write this as or split this into integration from a to b p x prime plus q y prime plus i times integration from a to b of p y prime minus q x prime d t ok. So, now uh, we will interpret each of these integrals to understand what this line integral is doing ok. So, here is the curve gamma ok and at a point t in time ok here is the point gamma of t let us say ok gamma prime of t gives you the tangent vector uh, to this curve at a point uh, gamma of t ok. So, here is gamma prime of t which is the tangent vector to this uh, curve ok and v which is uh, let us say the velocity vector based at this point gamma of t is somewhat like that let us assume ok. Then uh, you notice that the integrand here I am sorry this is dt here ok. The integrand here in the first integral p x prime plus q y prime Okay, can be interpreted as the dot product of v with uh, the tangent vector gamma prime of t. Okay. So, here is the velocity vector v. Okay. So, uh, so, gamma prime of t I mean v, v times gamma v dot gamma prime of t is the first integrand. Okay. So, the real part what it does is uh, okay. it takes the dot product of the tangent vector with uh, with the velocity vector ok and plus i times what about the imaginary part the imaginary part is the dot product of or can be interpreted as the dot product of the vector p q let us say ok with the vector y prime minus x prime ok. Now, y prime minus x prime is a vector which is perpendicular to x prime comma y prime. So, it is a vector perpendicular to the um, to the tangent to the curve which means it is a normal to the curve ok and from the direction y prime minus x prime we can make out that it is uh, pointing inwards whatever inwards means. So, which means it is pointing from the uh, left of the curve to the right of the curve ok. So, ok from the region left of the curve to the region right of the curve ok starting from the point gamma prime of t ok. So, uh, this integrand in the imaginary part can be interpreted as the uh, dot product of v with uh, the normal in that particular direction ok dt. Okay. So, what is the physical interpretation of these two velocity when integrated along a direction if we assume is the uh, displacement of the fluid or the amount of fluid. Okay. So, then this integrand in this integration actually gives you the displacement of fluid along the curve gamma 
Okay, and this imaginary part is is uh, this stands for the displacement of fluid. Okay, uh, into okay this does not I mean this into does not make sense for a non closed curve, but uh, let me just write it it is into the inside of gamma. Okay, so, after writing it let me explain that it is called the flux of the of the uh, of this uh, velocity vector okay, uh, with respect to this curve at the point gamma of t. Okay. So, it is it is the uh, component of the velocity uh, which is perpendicular to this um, to this particular uh, arc. Okay. So, then when we have a closed curve Okay, so, for a simple closed curve contour okay, or from what we have uh, proved. Okay, so, this is more general, but uh, uh, for a rectangular region at least we proved the Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, for a rectangular region uh, Cauchy's theorem says that uh, says that the integration of f of z dz where f is analytic okay, uh, is equal to 0, okay, where f is analytic on and inside the contour uh, r. Okay. So, uh, from the fluid flow um, interpretation, okay, so what we have is if the fluid flow, uh, I mean uh, if the velocity field v is f of z bar for an analytic function f on and inside this rectangular region r. What we can say is that there is no amount of fluid. Okay, uh, this is telling you that the integration of f of z dz on dou r sorry, is equal to real part of uh, the integration of f of z dz on the boundary of r plus i times the imaginary part of this which is 0 okay, which is given to be 0 uh, by this um, okay, by Cauchy's theorem. So, since the real part and the imaginary part are both 0 okay, what the real what this part is telling you is that uh, the fluid displacement okay, or fluid displaced okay, along the curve, along the closed curve that is important okay, along the closed curve is 0. Okay. So, there is no uh, fluid which actually keeps flowing around a contour. Okay. So, there is no stagnation in that sense. Okay. And the imaginary part being 0 tells us that uh, okay, once again averse that there are no uh, okay, there is no fluid trapped inside the rectangular region. So, whatever fluid crosses the rectangular uh, the boundary of the rectangular region or into the rectangular region has to come out. Okay. So, uh, so, there is no fluid which remains trapped that is what this says okay. uh, because uh, when you add up the normal components of this velocity they give you the total fluid okay, uh, which remains inside. So, that is 0 tells you that there is no fluid which is trapped. Okay, so, this is an interpretation physical interpretation of uh, Cauchy's theorem. Next, let us uh, consider the following uh, extension of uh, Cauchy's theorem a mild extension of Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, let uh, f of z be analytic uh, on and inside okay, on an open set containing
a rectangle R, okay, a rectangular region. Okay, by rectangle R, I mean the rectangular region R. Okay, except at a point uh, zeta inside, okay, uh, which is in the interior of this region. Okay. So, if it is true that uh, if the limit as z goes to this point, the special point zeta, z minus zeta times f of z, if this limit is equal to 0, okay, then the integration okay, on the boundary of this rectangular region r of f of z dz is still going to uh, be 0. Okay. So, uh, this is modified uh, Cauchy's theorem. So, we have the similar setting or almost the same setting except that there is a special point zeta, uh, where f is not exactly analytic, f is uh, not analytic perhaps it is not even defined there, but what is important is it satisfies this mysterious condition. Okay. Uh, then uh, it is still true that the integration on the boundary of r of f of z dz uh, is going to give us 0. Okay. So, we will decode this later, but uh, this mysterious condition later, uh, but for now uh, this can be considered as uh, a slight extension of uh, Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, let us see uh, how uh, or why this is true. Okay. So, uh, what we do is here is the schematic. Okay. So, here is the rectangular region R okay, and then there is this special point zeta which is in the interior of R. Okay. So, what we do is uh, we divide this rectangle, okay, uh, subdivide this rectangle into further rectangles and consider a small enough rectangle around the special point uh, zeta. Okay. So, uh, we will use uh, contour integration on the boundary of R in the counterclockwise direction. Okay. So, this is dou R is the uh, boundary of R in the uh, positive direction okay. uh, and then uh, using the Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, we will use contour integration like that and using the Cauchy's theorem that we just proved, uh, we will say that uh, the integration okay, uh, on any of these r 1, r 2, etcetera, okay, any of these rectangles, I will be uh, a little informal about this. I will just say uh, the on boundary of any of r i s, okay, uh, the integration of f of z t z is equal to uh, 0. Okay, that we know because f is analytic on an open set containing this whole rectangular region, for example. Okay. Now, uh, perhaps except on this little rectangle which surrounds the special point uh, zeta. Okay. So, for that special point zeta, I am going to make a special adjustment. Okay. So, firstly notice that the integration on the boundary of r in the uh, counterclockwise direction okay, uh, is now equal to of f of z dz is equal to the integration on this uh, smaller rectangular region okay i can assume that to be a square i can adjust these sides so that that small uh, rectangle is actually a square okay so that uh, i'll say that is um, r zeta which stands for the rectangle containing zeta okay so the integration uh, is equal to the integration on boundary of the rectangle r zeta of f of z Okay. So, uh, we will save this equation 1 okay. and uh, with the given condition. Okay. So, given epsilon greater than 0, since uh, limit as z goes to zeta of z minus zeta times f of z is equal to 0, given epsilon zero, uh, greater than 0, uh, there, is, uh, there is a delta positive okay, such that whenever uh, modulus of 
z minus zeta is strictly less than delta okay uh, the modulus of z minus zeta times the modulus of f of z okay is strictly less than epsilon because the limit as z goes to zeta of this quantity is zero okay the modulus of this is arbitrarily less as z goes to zeta okay so i can do this and uh, what this is telling me is that the modulus of f of z by uh, or is strictly less than epsilon divided by modulus of z minus zeta whenever this occurs okay so so i can choose uh, this delta okay uh, well uh, given epsilon i can choose this delta so that two occurs okay and uh, by this uh, what we have is by the pre estimation theorem we had uh, in the last session okay the uh, modulus of the integration over uh, do r zeta of f of z dz okay is less than or equal to the uh, integration over do r zeta of the modulus of f of z modulus dz okay which is now by 2 this is uh, strictly less than um, epsilon okay uh, or i can say this is less than or equal to uh, epsilon times integration over do r zeta of uh, modulus of dz by modulus of z minus zeta okay so by choosing r zeta to be small enough okay i can uh, notice i can always adjust these uh, vertical lines to make this r zeta okay as small as possible that's your r zeta okay that's the rectangle r zeta i can make it a square centered at uh, zeta and i can make it as small as i like okay so uh, so then i have this estimate okay so when uh, r zeta is a square centered at zeta and uh, your uh, z varies on the boundary of r zeta okay what we have is the modulus of z minus zeta for uh, z belonging to do r zeta okay uh, is such that the modulus of z minus zeta okay is uh, less than or is greater than or equal to okay is greater than or equal to uh, s by 2 okay where s is the side of r zeta side length of r zeta of the rectangular region r zeta okay so when this occurs uh, 1 by modulus of z minus zeta okay is uh, less than or equal to 2 by s okay so the modulus of d zeta dz okay on the uh, boundary of r zeta divided by modulus of z minus zeta okay is less than or equal to 2 by s times the integration uh, over do r zeta of modulus of dz okay and that is nothing but uh, the length of this uh, curve uh, d uh, of this curve do r zeta okay which is 2 by s times uh, 4s okay so this is 8s sorry 8 rather okay so this this quantity is less than or equal to 8 okay so this is less than uh, or equal to 8 epsilon okay since epsilon is arbitrary okay so uh, since epsilon greater than 0 is arbitrary so given any epsilon i can do this okay what i conclude is that the integration the modulus of this uh, integration is 0 okay so the only complex number with, uh, with 0 modulus is 0 so the integration over do r of f of z dz is actually uh, uh, this is zeta actually r zeta but this is equal to uh, integration over do r of f of z dz by uh, 1 okay by the equation 1 here 
Okay. So, this is equal to uh, 0. Okay. So, that proves the contention. Okay. So, uh, with this I will uh, stop this lecture here.